Welcome to part two of this brief introduction to the ideas behind the dissolution of the monasteries. The monasteries represented both a political threat and also a financial opportunity to Henry VIII, which is why in the previous film we ended with the point that Henry had other reasons for dissolving the monasteries power and money. They were a political threat to Henry because the monks were loyal directly to the Pope in Rome. And of course we've said, haven't we, that one of the reasons why Henry broke with the Catholic Church was because he needed to challenge the power of the Pope. And therefore, you can't have large numbers of people dotted around the countryside who are actively supporting your opponent. The other aspect was the financial opportunity which the monasteries represented because the large monasteries, not the small ones, but the large monasteries, which were the ones that Henry dissolved most enthusiastically, the large monasteries were rich. They owned a very large amount of land and therefore by dissolving them, because he was head of the church, Henry could seize their land and all the things such as gold plate, gold crosses, stained glass, that the monasteries had. So we've said that the political threat was that they could become... centres of resistance to the Reformation. And Cromwell in particular was keen that they should be dissolved to prevent this from happening. The financial opportunity stemmed from the fact that they were rich. But we have to ask ourselves, why were monasteries rich? Well, the answer is because it's back to purgatory. People gave money to the monasteries to say masses for the souls of the dead. The richer you were, the more worried you would be about your soul, and therefore the more money you would give. Monasteries used the money to buy land, because land equals power. But the more land they had, the larger number of monks they could have, and therefore the more powerful their monastery became. Because if you wanted your soul prayed for, you didn't want it prayed for by one or two monks, you wanted it prayed for by hundreds of monks. However, some monasteries got so rich that there was a limit to the amount of land that they could buy. So they also invested in beautiful decoration for their churches, wonderful stained glass, beautiful carved wood, expensive and intricate gold plate for their altars, books, because books were so very expensive. And therefore, monasteries also became key employers in the area, not only of craftsmen, 
also of ordinary everyday people who worked on the farms to support the monks. So, by dissolving the monasteries, Henry got money because he could sell the land off to the gentry and he also got he removed potential resistance to the Reformation. So he removed a potential challenge to his power. But he also got something that he wasn't expecting, which was an extra problem because of what monasteries did for the areas in which they were located. Because they weren't just employers, they were also educators, hospitals, old age people's homes to a certain extent. Added to which, actually let's take note of the fact that monasteries were local employers They provided schools for the sons of the local gentry and sometimes poor scholars. They were hospitals and they provided care for the elderly and food for the poor. So as a result They provided a, what Mr. Benson would probably call a social infrastructure. By removing all of those things, Henry will feel threatened. So back to the, the next question. Where were the largest number um, of influential monasteries in terms of geographical location? You've got a 50-50 chance of being right. Were they in the north or were they in the south? The answer is that they were in the north, the north of England. And that presented a problem for Henry because Henry's government was based in the south, in London. Therefore, it was more difficult for Henry to control the north of England being based in the south. Added to which, life was much harsher in the north. The land wasn't so productive, the weather was worse. And as a result, what Henry did was set up a situation whereby he removed all of these really, really important spiritual and social support structures for the people who were in greatest need of them and who were the most difficult for him to control directly. And as a result, the north of England's response to the dissolution of the monasteries was to rise in rebellion against Henry in a rebellion which came to be called 
the pilgrimage of grace. And that word pilgrimage in relation to a rebellion is an interesting one. And that is what we will look at briefly next lesson. This ends this presentation on the dissolution of the monasteries.